game just looks really beautiful to begin with, so everything is, is fine on that end. Um, Thank you so much. Glad you like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I and I, I've been I've been I, I told Rachel I was like I want to get, um, you know I, I want to be able to have more conversations with, um, indie developers because of these passion projects and because of how, um, rich and how unique they look. Uh, but before we end up mm -hmm. asking questions about the game, how's the year been for you and your team? You know, 2020 and, and COVID has really changed the way game developers make games. How are y'all keeping it together? Um, for us, it wasn't too much of a change. Um, we've always kind of been sort of like this hybrid workplace that kind of focused on a little bit more on the re remote work side of things. Um, so it didn't really affect us too much. Um, we're based out of Orlando, Florida, and we have part of our team there. So it did affect that part of the team who wasn't really able to work too much in the office together. But um, we do have a large part of the team that is in the UK. So we um, do a lot of like remote, re uh, remote work and meetings and things like that. Right. And um, I, I've heard, at least for the most part, it's made it a little bit easier to, to keep in touch with folks um, with things like Zoom and Slack and all, and all these different, you know, platforms folks can use. Um, what brought you to the overall story of Path of Kami and like what are some of the games that influenced its play style and its design? I could see so uh, many nods to different like anime and different games from like the early 2000s, but what was it like getting to the overall story, getting to this point with Path of Kami? Um, it took so much, <laughs> to be honest. It's uh, <laughs> it's actually been in development for around, uh, or actually only probably in development for maybe a year and a half, but a lot of it was maybe like another year just for like design. It's been through a lot of um, design iterate iterations. Um, I'd say a lot of inspirations from, of course, Okami, uh, Zelda games. Mm. Um, the stories changed so much. I think um, in the beginning it was about this wolf and um like focus on about having like a path of or a pack of wolves and you kind of going on your journey with friends um but we had to cut scope a lot just because you know we're, we're a small team so um now it's more of a story uh, about a wolf and kind of his relationship with his family and ancestors and um uh focusing too on kind of his journey to going to the spirit world and, and this ending well um for a year and a half of uh work i mean i gotta say it looks really amazing um uh so i guess one of my questions actually is how does path of uh kami uh compare to the work your studio's done before well, this is actually, um, as, as a studio and as a group, this is like our first official game together. So this is, so this is sort of like our debut game. Um, but, it, but as individuals, like we've worked on other games. Um, mm -hmm. I know uh, I've worked on a few, uh, called like Celestial Harmony, Squire. Um, I know some other um, team members have worked on, um, oh, I can't think of the names right now but uh mm -hmm. yeah this is our first official game as a studio a lot of that information too is on the website and i've and i was thinking i'm like man y'all have had your hands on so many different things it, it, it for a first game it again looks incredible because rich and i are like you know mm -hmm. just beginning to to play with the idea of making our own games and i'm like our our shit is looking like microsoft paint but this is your, <laughs> you know, this is your first game, um, and again, it, it really looks stunning. Um, a, a lot of your your team members, from from the information that, that you provided about your team, you know, you really enjoy anime and, and manga. And Path of Kami reminded me, and of, and a lot of players of Okami from you know the early two thousands. When you were putting the narrative together, was the intention always to draw on the Japanese symbolism um, and to work from that kind of cultural lens, or did it happen in, in a different organic way? Um, I think we'd always kind of wanted to do something Japanese themed just because um, the team's like very passionate about it. And um, I know a lot of team members have, have actually gone to Japan and just uh, totally in love with like the culture and its rich history. Um, 
So yeah, I think we've always kind of came at it from that lens, but the story has always been kind of organically been made just because of, um, you know, the constraints with scope and um, how we kind of want to portray the story and things like that. Um, I don't know, Barbara, if you have any thoughts on like the art side of things of, of how we would want to like convey the, the story to players. Oh, definitely. Um, when it comes to creating the environment, we usually draw inspiration from stylized games, um, which is actually uh, quite challenging when looking at uh, traditional Japanese structures, because tr usually in Japan everything is already stylized. So it poses kind of a challenge where we want to um, be accurate and at the same time, you know, kind of have our own little fun with it. Right. But we definitely get a lot of inspiration from um, the watercolor style, like from Child of Light. That's a that's a, a a group favorite, and we also take a lot of info from the Edo period of Japan. Oh wow! Um, I mean, I, I actually uh, <clears throat> was playing the demo a little bit, <laughs> um, and I love the um, it almost looks like watercolor, like in the in the distance, right? Um, and then like as you like approach it, you know, the image like comes to life. Um, which I, I thought was uh, really, really cool. Um, very, I think, at least for games that I've played, I felt like that was very unique. Mm -hmm. um, now, so I know that behind the scenes, I mean, there's constant changes to, to games. I mean, you guys were talking about, you know, how you guys had many different iterations of the game. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see what were some of the challenges you and your team faced in maintaining communication and maintaining uh you know everybody up to date about all the changes that were going on because you know everybody's kind of doing a specific task and then every time there's an update you know everybody has to be aware of it and so version control is definitely one of those things that um everybody has to be like uh on top of mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm curious to see what um challenges you guys face oh yeah version control has been fun <laughs> uh <laughs> Yeah, we've actually re we started using GitHub for a while, and um, you know we had some team members talking about how um, SVN might be a bit better with it. Uh, we we actually use Unreal uh, for our, our game development. Someone mentioned that that might be a little bit better, so we've um, been using that, and so far it's so good. Um, a lot of our communication is mostly through Discord, and we'll have like weekly meetings, and we'll do stand-ups. Um, for whenever we're we do a lot of like agile mythology uh production type okay. practices so um we follow a lot of that like with sprints and things like that mm -hmm. um but yeah it's kind of how we do a lot of the communication and then of course if there's any like big design meeting or anything to help hash things out then we'll do that as well okay got you yeah yeah we mean... love brainstorming together <laughs> it's like oh, yeah. <laughs> we love it sometimes we kind of get ahead of, we kind of get a uh, past the uh, time limits because we just start throwing ideas around and um we're all really passionate about the culture and we're passionate about the art style as well so we're constantly going back and forth about it that that actually leads into my next point um because that brainstorming just sounds like it's you're, you're constantly cooking up new ideas Mm -hmm. Um, with regard to the lore of this, of this story of this game, do you feel that you're, you're pretty much set or you, like you're finished with the lore or are you continuing to add to it? Or do you find like there are areas of the narrative you're, uh, tweaking or, you know, refining because I'm, I'm, I'm the right, I would do like the writing side of things. So when, when Rich and I get down to the brass tacks, he's got the, the, the numbers and the codes. Cause I don't know what the hell's going on in that department. So <laughs> I, I just bring like the color and the story, but I feel like I'd constantly be changing something. So are, are you, are you still expanding this universe for, um, your game or, or do you feel satisfied with how much of the story, um, has been established? Oh yeah, definitely still expanding. Um, I think we uh, kind of focused a bit more on like on like the mechanics and the gameplay side of things for the demo, but we definitely want to add a lot more story and kind of share like his his journey and his relationship with the Wisp. I don't want to give away too much, um, but mm -hmm. the Wisp character definitely has like a lot of growth involved with it, um, and 
in the prologue um so we definitely want to add more of that and yeah always wanting to um to grow it as much as we can and convey that to the player as much as we can yeah i think um one of the biggest uh challenges at least you know even like for myself when when jamal and i are getting together to you know come up with uh how to implement all the ideas right um there's always um just so many different ways that you know programmer can implement you know all these like gameplay mechanics um and i myself uh tend to find myself kind of balancing between two different um types of things where i'm like okay i can get something up and running but i don't know if it's the most efficient mm -hmm. um and then on the other side i'm like let me think through every little tiny detail because I want this to be the most efficient, but then I end up not implementing anything because I stay too much like, you know, thinking. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm curious to see uh, what were some of the challenges um, you and your team face when designing and implementing, you know, all these complex systems, um, you know, in your game? Because I think a lot of people who, you know, aren't into game development um, don't really get an understanding or an appreciation for how complex um, it is to make these kinds of games even with the little uh, simple things right like shooting that projectile that then uh, lights up the lantern and then activates you know certain objects to move in the game oh yeah it takes lots of planning involved and documentation and all of that fun stuff um I think something that's helped us is just trying to focus a lot on the pre-production side of uh, like the tech design and, and just general game design and trying to plan things out and then uh, prototyping them. Um, but yeah, a very long process. Uh, just to light these lanterns, mm -hmm. for example, um, there are different ways we could approach it. We could have had a system where um, maybe they might be able to fire the or light the lantern at any like wherever they are. Um, mm -hmm. or like the system we have now, they have to be within a certain proximity to it to be able to light it. And we kind of leaned more on that system because um, it fits pretty well with the health system that we have. Um, mm -hmm. These orbs around the, the, the player, for example, um, those kind of convey how much health you have. Um, and the lower, the lower your health you have, um, the more ghostly you'll look. So you see we were at full health, so you could see uh, our player model like, pretty visible right now but if we were in low health um he'd look very ghostly like um and we figured if the player is able to shoot the fire whenever they want then they'll be kind of in low health and they won't really be able to interact with the puzzles that we have because that's also based off of the health as well mm -hmm. uh, so that's why we mm. leaned a bit more on that system and that whole explanation was just for one system that we have in the game <laughs> <we have>. yeah <laughs> i know i know i know <laughs> it's it's crazy like I, I like i'm watching you just like move around and i'm like you know all these little paw prints that are on the ground you know somebody has to uh program that right and be able to display mm -hmm. that um you know there's a whole discussion on uh managing uh memory resources um as you're developing the game um you know that the casual you know user won't think about um and i'd love to kind of like get people to a level of some kind of understanding where they can appreciate you know what a team uh develops right um because again it's so much work um involved in so many pieces and how we were talking about earlier like the version control and maintaining communication like it's it's a lot and i i really really <laughs> i really enjoy like exploring in this game you know um it's it's just really fun i appreciate it yeah, we try to focus um, a lot. We really want to do like a casual game that, you know, uh, I don't know some people call them like weekender type games mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that you could probably finish in just a weekend. Um, but keep it casual, relaxing, but still have like some challenging elements with some of the puzzles. When when Richard was talking about the casual gamer, he's definitely talking about me because these complex <laughs> you know, systems okay. and complex goings on, I, I'm totally unaware of, but I can... I could come to appreciate something like a few moments ago you were staying still and um and your character just i think went into like a 
like a seated position or something that just looks super adorable. So even oh. even <laughs> little things like that where you, you take into consideration the idle animation or, or what a character does if, if you happen to just put the controller down you or your AFK, I, I think is really thoughtful. Um, Absolutely. Could, could you just talk us through uh, just a general sense of what's going on right now? What are, what are, uh, where are we? Right. And, and what are the like current objectives to, to, to take care of? Yeah. So we kind of built the level in a way um, that once you get past this uh, village type area, um, you can either go two of different ways. You could go towards the, um, the waterfall area that we just finished, um, or you can come over here to this uh, graveyard area. Um, but the goal is to collect uh, three of these spirit keys and um, you have to visit all these different areas to be able to do that. Um, and then right now we can see here that we, this is one of our sacred fountains and it's an area where you can fill up uh, your, your health. Oh, there you go. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it in the back of my mind. I'm like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> He's like, come on, let's go. <laughs> um, yeah, wait, this these sacred fountains are used to replenish all of your health and, we can, and normally they're full but we can see here that one's empty so we have to do something to fill it up um so i'll just kind of explore here to see if we can find any lanterns that we can light up um yeah but yeah the goal is to uh collect these spirit keys and um that'll take you to a whole new area that you'll be able to go to um, in the prologue. Right now for the demo, the goal is just to ex kind of explore these areas, get an introduction of some of the mechanics that we have. Um, and then in the prologue, uh, once you have those three keys, it'll give you like access to a whole new area that you'll be able to visit. I was, I was gonna ask um, for both of you, um, what's been your favorite uh, part in the game development uh, process? Like what's What's been the thing that, you know, you guys look back at when you when you look at this game, you're like, man, I remember that time, you know, when we were working on this, you know, um, that just always comes to mind when you think about um, the path of coming. For me, it's, uh, I really enjoy whenever it's time to gather some references, because uh, there's a lot of, mm. I know a lot about modern Japan, but I didn't know as much about the Edo period of Japan. So it's always kind of like really exciting to go back to Japan's like older roots, um, especially for environment art. Uh, we mm -hmm. tend to look at uh, the Hokkaido landscapes for inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, Hokkaido is the northernmost of Japan's main islands and it's one of the least developed. developed. Uh, so we like to take a lot of the open you know, landscape and you know just like the mountains try to capture all the trees and just have like that lean into nature more um we also have a lot of elements scattered through the game from the shinto religion mm. um which is often referred to as japan's indigenous religion and it's uh, definitely the most nature religion um so it's really fun to incorporate these elements and uh you know for those players that are interested in kind of learning a little bit more about the culture uh, we work with a Japanese uh, consultant actually to make sure that we're being respectful to the culture and being accurate as possible. I think that's really so it's incredible. Fun cross referencing. <laughs> and I think it's really incredible. And Rich, I'm glad you asked that because that was that was legit. What I was going to ask before was like when it comes to reference photos, you know, or just reference content, um, and and as as the artist. Um, in this project, Barbara, I was wondering how much of that balancing act was there between the reference and a little bit of what y'all are bringing to to the game itself. Um, because you do you do the you're you're doing the culture justice by bringing in those other voices, those voices that can represent the authentic and genuine, um, you know, representation of the game. So I'm curious how much of your team is in it, and then how much of the references are in it and then at times was that balancing act a little overwhelming absolutely um jose beltran is the art director and he is like the go-to the guru <laughs> when mm -hmm. it comes to our, our art style because he has he has a jump pack on how to um as i mentioned earlier it's really difficult a lot more challenging than people think to make um something that's already really stylized and make it even more stylized mm -hmm, or, and mm -hmm. make it your own. 
Um, so he's really good about that because we play a lot with uh, something as simple as um, the cracks on like wood um, or on our rocks. Um, just little things like that will uh, completely change the way something looks in the game, especially with the specific shader that we use. Um, we also like to use like heavy use of that watercolor style to kind of make it seem more like a, a Japanese painting, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of the overall goal we go here. Um, but yeah, definitely there is a balancing act because we want to be true, but we also want to make it our own. So that's kind of how we play with it. It's just trying to make it a little bit more, uh, dare I say, cartoony. <laughs> <laughs> but it complements it complements the style. And Deanna, I'm so I'm so sorry. I I jumped in. We didn't get to hear your favorite part of this development process. Um, I kind of just hijacked <laughs> the conversation right. because I was I was obsessed with the references. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I, that's also one of my favorites, uh, just, you know, we're, even though Japan's like an, an island, there's just so much rich history and, and amazing places to visit, um, so gathering references and learning even more about these areas uh, is always super exciting, and then um, just the game design and implementation portion is my favorite, it's really cool to, uh, to design something and see it come to life, and um, and just like as you're iterating more and more, um, it's really cool to look back at the project like a year ago and seeing where it is now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I bet that looks really cool. Um, and you guys should definitely be proud um, of what you guys have done so far. I mean, it's it's really very um, again, it's it's a game that that I can just sit back, relax, and just explore. You know, solve these puzzles. Um, and I mean, that wolf is adorable like mm -hmm. it is so cute and i love when you walk you, you see the paw prints like it's wow the, it's, the animation <laughs> and the animation look at it laying down like it's a very wholesome just, very wholesome game yeah, it's a nice break from 100%. like apex and cod which take over the oh summer my gosh. so yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. rich oh, and i <laughs> rich and i know yeah. <laughs> know about that so this is um it's it's a welcome reprieve from from those games um, before we let y'all go, what are you, uh, what are you both hoping gamers can just take away from Path of Kami? Me, it's super, I, my type of game, I'm always, I, I don't like games that are too stressful that depend too much on my skill set because I'm, I'm not the best shooter. Let's be honest, I can't get a headshot to save my life, so, <laughs> you know, those, those kind of games give me a lot of anxiety, and I just feel like, even though, you know, even when you're not playing a multiplayer, even if it's just like a, you know, an RPG, sometimes it's just, I'm not in the right mindset to play those kinds of games, and it's always been games like Journey, Gris, um, that have been, first of all, that I have the time to play, that, are, that I can finish in a weekend, and second, that I'm not worried about my how terrible I am at video games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so oh, yeah. that we really wanted to create something where non-gamers can, you know, slowly walk into the video game world without feeling that pressure. Because I feel like a lot of people um, don't play games because they're afraid to be bad. And in this game, you, you just can't be bad. You know, you're here to enjoy it and take what, you know, take this beautiful landscape and the story and, and, and walk away with a lot more than just, oh man, I got three headshots today, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to, hopefully it's like a game some, somebody can play to just kind of relax and kind of learn a bit about uh, Japan's culture and um, yeah, just be able to take their mind off of things. Well, Deanna, Barbara, uh, and the rest of your team, I mean, send our regards to them because this game is beautiful. Um, it, it seems to do a lot of justice to, to, the, um, to the culture and to the art. Um, and you made fans of, of Richard and I, and we appreciate your time. Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. And thank you all immensely for it. And and wish you the best of luck and, and hope we can get that, um, that crowdfunding goal reached. 